Carpenter welcoming you to the Bing Crosby Show, presented by Chesterfield, produced and transcribed in San Francisco. With John Scott Trotter and his orchestra, Judd Collins with the mayors, and Bing's guest, Bob Hope. Ah, oh, this is really an important evening, an outstanding evening. To tell the truth, I'm, I'm tingling. I'm fairly a quiver with excitement. You mean because uh, Bob's going to be on the program? No, Ken, no, not at all, because this is February 1st, the eve of National Sauerkraut Week. <laughs> Oh, it's nice to eat more sauerkraut week with us again. Yep, glad. I'm delirious. <laughs> yes, sir. Tomorrow, tomorrow begins National Kraut and Frankfurter Week, February second to February eleventh. Yeah, uh, but from the second to the eleventh isn't a week, Bing. It's ten days. What's the extra three days for? That's for people to just lay there and gasp. <laughs> you know, folks really go for sauerkraut and hot dogs, Bing. Do you realize that in 1949 the American people consumed 40,000 tons of sauerkraut and five billion frankfurters? They'll never get off the ground. They'll never make it. <laughs> never. But, you know, I think it's wonderful. All the the special weeks we have in this country: National Hot Tea Week, my favorite week; National Ice Tea Week, love that week; National Bring out your tea bag week. <laughs> yes, and what about National Feel Sorry for Pickles because they have warts on them? Oh, week. that's sweet. <laughs> that's a nice week. Sour too. Let's not get dill here. Right. Mm. Uh, but Bing, how about that other big week? Which one's that? That's National Play the Other Side of Mule Train Week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm for that. Again, it strikes me that they've really overlooked a, a, an important week, something that, that's really needed. What's that? National Take Up a Collection for Brinks Express Company Week. <laughs> now, there is a real needy cause. <laughs> but there's one hitch. What's that? Well, after the collection has been taken, who's going to watch it for? <laughs> I, 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 now, Mr. Bones, I think we've had enough of this fall to all, this persiflage. The rhythm airs are gathering around, and our opening song is a song called The Big Movie Show in the Sky. It's from a Broadway production called Texas Little Darling. The show has very nice music by Bobby Dolan and some very nice lyrics by the master, Johnny Mercer. Let's go, John Scott. <laughs> A fella can get lonesome when he is all alone Out there in the Pacific with no friends to call his own A fella can get lonely out there in the Pacific A fella gets to thinking if he's getting anywhere A fella gets to wondering how it's gonna be up there A fella gets to wondering if he will meet the mayor When your final chip is cashed and the pearly gates swing wide there is old St. Peter asking you to come inside. There is old St. Peter, the Lord's official greeter. He whispers, son, go find a seat, I hope you like the show. And then you see a picture of the life you let below. Bye and bye, bye and bye. Can you look yourself in the eye? When you come on the screen up yonder At the big movie show in the sky Imagine you are one of the great celestial crowd Sitting back relaxing with your feet up on a cloud Surely can't be taxing, I'm sitting back relaxing You're a pouring buttered sunshine on your popcorn white as fleece and waiting for the latest into Hemisphere release. The stars spell out the title and the cast before your eye. The show commences on that silver screen they call the sky. The stars spell out the title and every scene is vital. The past begins unfolding and you see it taking place. And pretty soon you're looking at your own big ugly face. When you come on the screen up yonder At the big movie show in the sky The big movie show in the sky 
Thank you. You know, Ken, some clients are always making big claims about their products, but, you know, some they back up and some they don't. Yes, Bing, and some you believe and some you don't. Paramount has a picture out now called Bitter Victory, and the Victor Young wrote a beautiful ballad for it, to which uh, Mr. Livingston and Mr. Evans set some lyrics. Oh, you're wonderful You're all that I've yearned for The flame that I've burned for You're by my side To stay Wonderful be on a crest with this love we've been blessed with It warms our every day You complete The glow that was missing in casual kissing The glow that comes with love Now my sweet we found a new feeling we're whirling, we're reeling it's wonderful so wonderful you're wonderful Now, ladies and gentlemen, continuing in our constant endeavor to keep abreast of the times, I want to present the national head of Sauerkraut Week. Here he is, old Kraut Head himself, Mr. Bob Hall. Kraut <laughs> Head, huh? Yeah. Look who's talking, the pickle in the middle with nothing on top. Oh, you, you think maybe I could use a little of, of the sauerkraut on the top? Hmm, Maya? You didn't no, I know? think I give you coleslaw. You look better in a cool cut. Cool <laughs> cut. Yeah. Danke schön. Danke schön. That yes. was... <laughs> but I can understand why you're so interested in sauerkraut, Flabby. Why is that, Droopy? <laughs> your director over at Paramount told me he was going to make you eat it while you do your love scenes in your next picture. Why sauerkraut for my love scenes? At your age, they have to feed you vinegar to make you pucker. <laughs> hey. Come here. That's uh, all. Good night. <laughs> back. Back. I, I, I've, I've seen you do some love scenes in pictures, old man. Uh, well, what's wrong with them? You look like you're trying to take a bone away from a St. Bernard. <laughs> <laughs> That's hard to do. <laughs> And before we go any further, let's talk about what I'm getting for tonight. Let's get into the loot, Oh, no, huh? wait. You mean you're, you're not happy about, about what I'm giving you to appear? Not exactly. Chesterfield's satisfied, but not like money. Let's get into it, boy. <laughs> yeah, I want to know who's going to pay me for taking this Hooper dive. Who's, uh... <laughs> I tell you what you do, son. You, you talk to my brother Everett, will you? What? <laughs> talk to my brother Everett. Who's going to pay me for that? <laughs> I do like San Francisco, though. You know, when I wake up in the morning, I have a beautiful view of the whole city. I didn't realize you were so fond of San Francisco, really. Don't knock it. Nobody offered to build a bridge across your bay. <laughs> That'll do. That's all. No, no, no. Not too much. When it comes to figures, Buster, I got it all over you. Listen, if you ever took off your girdle, you'd have it all over everything. Now you... I... <laughs> Take a gander at your tummy. Looks like a cable car going downhill. <laughs> <laughs> Who 
Bob, I'm sorry I didn't have a chance to ask you, but I guess I should. How's your shoulder coming along? Oh, it's getting better, but you'll notice I'm still carrying my shoulder in a cast. It's about time you carried a cast. In all your pictures, your cast has been carrying you. <laughs> Turn about. Oh. I'm seriously. Oh, I, I'm that really... was a jazzy one, wasn't it? <laughs> I'm really interested. <laughs> Eh? I love this house. You can reach down and tickle the audience. Can't you? <laughs> and vice I, versa. I, Don't let anything hold you back. Go ahead. <laughs> Tell me, I'm, I'm interested. I really am, and I guess everybody else is. How did the accident happen? Anyway? Well, it was a typical California evening. I was driving, and my companion was bailing out the glove compartment. <laughs> a little, a little moisture. Eh? Yeah, it was raining, but good. And I was following the white line, and I got detoured by. Hey, this is good. I'm going to save this for my own show. <laughs> You're getting paid, Buglebeak. Read it. Come on. <laughs> Tyrant. As I was saying, I was following the white line and got detoured by a good humor man with his vanilla dragging. <laughs> you know, I really should have saved it. Oh, I could have used that kid. But honestly, Robert, I forgot to thank you. It was very sweet of you. Very nice gesture of yours to mail me your x-rays. I appreciate it. Well, I sent them to you as proof. <laughs> I wanted you to have proof after this, don't accuse me of swallowing your golf ball. <laughs> Did you like the... Uh... Did you like the x-rays? Yes, I thought the dialogue was much better than in most of your recent films. <laughs> For a guy who made Top of the Morning, you're being awfully cocky, you know. <laughs> Don't think you're a you big actor just too. because they used your snoot for a spear in Samson and Delilah. <laughs> Let's not tell them whose jawbone we use, shall uh -uh. we? <laughs> and speaking of the picture, I got news for you. Well, Cecil B. DeMille promised to put me in Samson and Delilah, but he double-crossed me. What happened? He gave Hedy Lamar the part. <laughs> oh. And after I went to the trouble of cutting a plunging neckline in my lumber jacket. <laughs> Say, Wormy, I haven't seen you since <laughs> your trip up... <laughs> Something snuck in there. <laughs> Tell me something, beet seed. Yes, rumble seed. Come are on. you stab... Uh, you, you are? <laughs> are you still dabbling in research for the Crosby Foundation? Well, yeah, but there's nothing we can do about your case. <laughs> but you managed to keep pretty busy for a man with your talent. Radio pictures, cigarette girl at Ciro's, sword boy at Omar Khayyam's, scallopini molder at DiMaggio's. <laughs> Have you thought about television? No, no, I'm sticking to radio. And I'm sticking to radio, too. None of that television for me. Oh, me neither. I'm not going to have anything to do with television. Nobody asked you either, huh? <laughs> uh, they, uh, they asked me, but I can't afford the plastic surgery. <laughs> when did they remove your appendix? I just noticed that. <laughs> Incidentally, I want to tell you, talking about television, I got a big fellow working with me, and, and uh, he's a big television man, and he's working with me in my next picture. Yeah? They're, they're, they're working it out. Paramount's planning a flicker for Hopalong Cassidy and me. Do you know that? Really? What's the matter? Is he too proud to ride a horse? Oh, go on. <laughs> but that's a nice combination, though. Hop along and drag along, isn't it? <laughs> Keep talking, Gab along. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you have a line in there? Well, <laughs> there's a straight line. Well, please read it. <laughs> Say, let me ask you something, Barge Bottom. I was just <laughs> going to get... What's straight about that? <laughs> what I want to know is, and if, I want to know what films are you attempting to make your comeback this year? Oh, I have a great... <laughs> I didn't mean to get my big galosh right on your line. <laughs> I never realized you get a laugh with a dirty little thing like that. <laughs> it doesn't match the way you read it. <laughs> Rising inflection. You threw it away. You should have thrown it away before the program. <laughs> I have I a use... great picture coming out. It's called Fancy Pants, mm. and it's so important they're not going to show it on a double bill. It's going to appear all over the country with just a Technicolor short subject. Oh, that'll look grand on the billboards. Fancy Pants with colored shorts. <laughs> Please, this program is heard on Knob Hill, I think. <laughs> I'm glad we're out of time. Mm. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> Oh, what happened? I'm glad we're out of town. I you said, said that. that. Yes, I say. <laughs> Laid a small... And I the... say... And you say... We didn't come up here voluntarily, folks. We were chased this way. <laughs> Don't stretch the material. I, I gotta... 
I, I got to congratulate you, anyhow. Really, yes. I must. Please do. You know, really, when you come to think of it, you, you, you're due for congratulations because a few short years ago, you started out with nothing. And I can honestly say, you've retained every bit of it. <laughs> well, I'm going to do all right. I'm practicing to make a He-Man picture. You know those He-Men? They always wear their shirts unbuttoned. Mm -hmm. So I unbuttoned mine and walked around my neighborhood last week. What, uh, what occurred? When I passed the meat <laughs> I love those kind of straight lines. Yeah. What a curve. What a curve. <laughs> ben Bard. <laughs> Something you stole from Dwight Fisk, and what a curve. <laughs> Would you mind giving me that again? So I unbuttoned my shirt, and, and uh, I walked around my neighborhood last week. And what a curve. Uh, <laughs> I've got several readings I can give you. <laughs> you might as well forget this gag. We're dead, you know. <laughs> Well, anyway, I unbuttoned my shirt and walked around my neighborhood, and when I passed the meat market, a woman looked at my chest, turned to the butcher, and said, Why can't I get halibut like that without any bones? Oh, no, Bob. Really. That's what occurred. <laughs> I think, actually, you're being unduly modest. I think this is a good time to remind our friends that in the recent popularity poll, you emerged in the number one spot as the box office champion of 1949. Well, it wasn't easy, Bing. You know, you were in the top spot, and for five years I tried to get in, and I was finally elected. Well, this should be happy news for the Dewey supporters. Anybody can make it. <laughs> <laughs> but I know you really, you don't really mean that, certainly do you, Lars? Not, certainly not, Bob. We've got a lot have a little fun here, you know, and kid a little, but as a matter of fact, I have a little song that I'd like to sing for you. Would you care for me to throw a little true melody in? Elbowing in, always elbowing. Bob, this song will tell you and everybody exactly how I feel about you. John Scott, give me the downbeat. A little panegyric for Mr. Hope. Uh, what? Can you say that on the air? <laughs> have I told you lately that I love you? Why, Dad? Could I give the information now? What did Dixie say? Have I told with all my heart and soul how I adore you? Let's keep it crisp. Well, Robert, I'm telling you now. I think this kid wants to go steady. My heart would break in two if you'd refuse me. You know, this is bigger than both of us. I'm no good. And that's large. Without you, anyhow. I know, I saw your last picture. Say, have I told you lately that I love you? Keep it tender, Dad. Well, zoot suit, I'm telling you now. Second chorus. <laughs> Thing I'd like to say, how I admire you, my buddy, and a memory in my heart I keep. Isn't this touching? Oh. As a Harris. child. I always had your records at my bedside Even then they put me to sleep <laughs> Oh, how he'd cry, old pal, if he should lose you Play your hearts and flowers and pull out all the stops Oh, has he told you lately that he loves you? Well, listen, he's telling you, Pops. Listen, Cross, this year at the box office, mm -hmm. I was number one. Does that seem strange? Well, no, not really. Not at all. Not to me. You're always first at the box office. Thank you. Because you get there before the prices change. <laughs> His heart would break in two if he should lose you. I'm no good without you anyhow. You haven't told me lately that you love me. Well, Buster, he's telling you now. Have I said 
How smart I think your clothes are. I'm practically formal tonight. As a well dressed man, you're in first place. Thank you, very dapper. I've always thought Manji was a bum. In that suit, <laughs> you look as though you'd stepped right out of Esquire and then fallen flat on your face. <laughs> Your hoopered brain in two if you should lose me. Watch that shoulder when you take a bow. It's just sympathy, that's all. Have I told you lately that I love you? <laughs> well, Punchy, I'm telling you now. Have I told you lately how I miss you? What a friendship! <laughs> <laughs> With tears my eyes are wet. <laughs> for we travel down that road for Paramount together. I'm with you. Oh, brother, how corny can you get? <laughs> <laughs> this heart would break in two if I should lose you I'm no good without you anyhow Oh, have I told you lately that I love you? Well, Buster, I'm telling Robert, as long as you're standing here with your mouth shut, I'd like to tell you that the Chesterfield people are very happy that you appeared at the opening of their new factory and research laboratories at Durham, North Carolina last week. Well, it was wonderful, Bing. Grady Cole was on the show, and mm -hmm. Eddie Arnold, and Mindy Carson, of course, Perry Coma, and Arthur Godfrey were Oh, there. I wish I could have made it. And Bing, do you know how those Chesterfield officials in New York light their cigarettes? Oh, I imagine they have very fancy cigarette lighters. No, they just rub Godfrey and Como together. <laughs> <laughs> it should spark pretty good. Naturally, it'd be too dangerous to try that with you, getting all that Crisco so close to a flame. It would I be... don't see what you mean. I Dangerous, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Pardon me, pal. Have I told you lately that I love you? I understand. I'm lovely. Now, <laughs> You're lovely. You're engaged. You use Brillo. <laughs> it's it's time to it's tell the that folks that, 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 that Chesterfield... That's a terrible line to send me off. To no, we got more. <laughs> Stand by. Don't let him leave the premises. a new song, and rather a nice one, I think, with lyrics by Sis Wilner, music by Doris Talber. Why remind me the way we used to talk and laugh? I don't need any photographs. To think of you Why Remind me The way we danced The whole night long I don't need records Of our song To sing it I don't need books of matches To remember our cafe What earthly good are matches To a flame of yesterday Why Love has played its part 
I'm only asking of my heart To stop reminding me of you Love has played its part I'm only asking of my heart To stop reminding me of you Thank you very much. That very about gets it. And Bob, I want, to, <laughs> I want to tell you, in spite of the, the uh, thinly veiled invective, the slightly barbed banter that took place here tonight, <laughs> I'm really happy that you came up to San Francisco. Well, I had a great time being. And to the folks listening in Seattle, get ready. I think the mob is going to chase us north. <laughs> I think we're safe here. Say, who's with you next week, Bing? Next week, Bob, our guest will be Fred Allen. Fred Allen? Mm -hmm. what's yes, he, I, I think... What's he do? Well, I think it'd be nice to have a comedian on the program for a change. Somebody <laughs> lighten it up a little. Have I told you lately that I love you? Forget <laughs> it. <laughs> you know, Bob, Fred Allen retired from radio during 1949. Well, working with you may lay him off for 1950. Oh, <laughs> we'll do all right. Come on, let's go out and eat. I got a do-bill on the white tower. Yeah. You want to go? <laughs> got any money in your sling? <laughs> Okay, Bob, we'll see you next week, folks, for Chesterfield, the best cigarette for you to smoke. And thanks very much. The Bing Crosby Show, presented by Chesterfield, was produced and transcribed in San Francisco by Bill Morrow and Murdo McKenzie. Tune in next week and hear Bing and his guest, Fred Allen. The George Burns and Gracie Allen Show follows immediately.